Hi, I'm Allison from Pennsylvania. I'm going to demonstrate how you would install a car seat when you have an emergency locking retractor and a locking latch plate. This one isn't too difficult. What you're going to do is you're going to buckle the latch plate in by feeding it through the appropriate belt path. Once you have that through the belt path, and buckled in. Going to make sure nothing's twisted. And you are going to just pull that shoulder belt part back a little bit, kind of get any of that excess webbing out, feed it up in. This is what's locking it now. Up here, you still have your ELR. This is not your locking mechanism. You've created the fixed length of the lap portion of the belt because you have this locking latch plate. You want to check it by moving side to side, front to back. It shouldn't move more than one inch. That's how you install a car seat when you have a locking latch plate. I'm going to demonstrate how to install a car seat when you have an automatic locking retractor, an ALR. That's what I have right here. I went past that dead zone. It's only locking. I know that it's going to automatically lock when I'm installing this car seat. So I'm going to first pull the webbing out and hold on to it because again, if I let that go back in, it's going to automatically retract right back into the retractor. I don't want to do that until I have it buckled. I come across, I buckle that in, I let all of that webbing retract back into the retractor on this side. Once I have that webbing retracted back in where I don't have any excess, I'm nice and snug here, I'm going to check and make sure it's not moving more than one inch side to side or front to back. That's as easy as it gets when it comes to installing car seats. When you have an automatic locking retractor, you pull it out so you're past that dead zone, you know it locks, and then you're going to feed it the whole way through and buckle in. to demonstrate how to install a car seat when you have a switchable retractor. This is the most common type of system that you'll find in vehicles today. If you remember, a switchable retractor is one that starts in ELR mode, but when you pull that seatbelt webbing the whole way out, it switches to ALR mode, automatic locking retractor. So to install a car seat, you're going to feed the seatbelt through the correct belt path for the seat that you are using to install. Buckle it in. Whoops. We'll try that again. Buckle it again. Then you want to remove any of the excess webbing. Oftentimes, it's good to push on that seat a little bit so that you can get any excess webbing out. Notice then, I'm pulling from here. Look what I still need to do. It's not doing me any good at this point. I've got to switch that retractor. Pull it the whole way out. Let that retract back in. Then you can tighten her up a little bit. Make sure that any excess webbing is out of that seat belt. And then you're going to check it at the belt path, one inch. You don't want it to move more than one inch, side to side or front to back. If it were moving a little bit, then you might just push on it a little bit more. Help that webbing retract back in. That's how you install a car seat when you have a switchable retractor. I'm going to demonstrate how to install a car seat using a locking clip. Well, why might I need a locking clip? Because I have a sliding latch plate and emergency locking retractor. Neither one are going to secure that car seat in the vehicle. I need that additional step. So I'm going to buckle this in just as I normally would, feeding it right through that belt path. I'm going to come over here, buckle it. You can hear that buckle. Then I'm going to remove any slack from the webbing. I don't want there to be any slack. Once I have that slack removed, I'm going to pinch the webbing. I want to pinch that webbing so that I can get the locking clip on without any of the uh, seatbelt webbing retracting back in. I take my locking clip. I want to put this locking clip on within one inch of the latch plate. So we'll go ahead, hook this on. By doing this, I'm creating that fixed length of webbing 
which will allow the car seat to be secured since we don't have a latch plate that locks nor a retractor that locks. I have the locking clip on. I can let go now. I'm going to feed it back through the belt path and I'm going to buckle it in. This is usually the hardest part. It's a lot harder to buckle once you have that locking clip on. Once I have it on, I'm going to check it at the belt path. I want to make sure it's not moving more than one inch side to side or front to back. If it's not moving, you're good to go. If it does move a little bit, you're just going to start over again by removing that locking clip and trying again. I'm going to demonstrate how to install a car seat when you have an emergency locking retractor, a sliding latch plate, but you have a lock off on the car seat that you're working with. In this case, this is a Kiko key fit. There is a shoulder belt lock off right here. We're going to use that to install this car seat. Because I have an emergency locking retractor, nothing's going to lock up here. I have a sliding latch plate. I need that additional step. I can use the lock off that's built in on this car seat to secure the car seat to the vehicle seat. I'm going to buckle it in. I'm actually going to be using the shoulder belt lock off on this side. It's in Spanish, so I showed you that side that's so shoulder belt lock off. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to get any extra slack out of the seat by pulling on that webbing. Notice how I'm kind of pulling it down. It's not locked up here. It's not locked on that latch plate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide it right up in to, again, the shoulder belt lock off. It's in there nice and tight. It's not moving side to side, nor is it moving more than one inch front to back. For this seat, the lock off is here, just as I've demonstrated. There are many different examples of lock offs on different seats. So make sure you refer to your car seat instruction manual to be sure that you're following the guidance provided by that manufacturer. <laughs>